Hi, Marita. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for being the host uh, mm -hmm. for our poetry discussions. And mm -hmm. and um, also, you know, thank you to the Somerville Arts Council for really allowing this to happen in the first place. Uh, and today I am thrilled and delighted um, uh, to uh, introduce our very special guest, um, uh, a, uh, <laughs> um, uh, a dear friend and an extraordinary poet who has done, uh, I think, Martha, your last book was, was your 11th book. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, they've been an extraordinary array of poems that were both very personal, but also very public and political and all powerful. And I've asked you to read um uh to read a poem that um in some way is atypical of what you're best known for uh but it's also a poem that I've loved from the minute I I've I saw it you, when you showed it to me even before it was published and um uh, I would um, love it if you would read it to us. I shall. Uh, this is actually a poem that isn't in one of those books. It's in a little chapbook that I published, what, back in 2008. Um, and uh, you have this poem, right, all of you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we all, we all have it. So you know, there is this epigraph, which I will read, and then I will read the poem. Snow is expected to fall from the sky which appeared in the Boston Globe in March, 1999. From the sky. Snow will fall from the sky. Snow will turn to rain. Rain will fill our streams. The earth will turn again. Snow will turn to rain. Blossoms will fill the trees. The earth will turn again. Petals will fill the air. Blossoms will fill the trees. Petals will fall like snow. Petals will fill the air. Green will fill the trees. Petals will fall like snow. Petals will fall to earth. Green will fill the trees. Where air was, leaves will be. Petals will fall to earth, leaves will fall from trees. Where air was, leaves will Leaves where there was snow. Leaves will fall from trees, colors will brighten the air. Leaves where there was snow, leaves will fall to earth. Colors will brighten the air like hair and blood and skin. Leaves will fall to earth where we will fall from our leaves. Like hair and blood and skin, leaves will turn to earth where we will fall from our lives. Where we were, air will be. Leaves will turn to earth, rain will fill our streams. Where we were, Air will be, snow will fall from the sky. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, any, anyone want to say uh, why they think I love this poem so much? <laughs> Uh, Denise, yeah, um, yeah, unmute yourself. Yeah, um, good morning, everyone. I think a little bit it um, it's reminiscent of your um, sonnet, Triplet, Leaves. Oh, <laughs> well, that's, that, that, that's nice. I, I, um, 
I don't think I've ever I've actually thought of it, but they they have they have some things in common. Mm -hmm. They certainly have leaves. They have leaves. <laughs> they they certainly they have do. leaves in common. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah, your hand is up and then Mary. Sarah? Oh no, you have you have a a hand a hand up. No? Okay, Mary. And un unmute yourself. I wish everyone would just unmute unmute themselves um, yeah it's so annoying isn't it i'm sorry i always yeah no not in, no go right it ahead it becomes second nature yet pushing that little button well i don't know if this is what you love but one of the <laughs> one of the bunch of things that i love about the poem is um the way that it combines it, it's both haunting and reassuring and i love the way those two things kind of dance through the poem in the cyclical kind of evolving nature of the of the topic or topics um i just i i, I find it, it it seems to play with there's a sense of certainty in the short the it is a pantoum isn't it yep is it is it ever i i, <laughs> it is, I yes I, I, I would i would i would say it was the best pantoum i've ever certainly the best one i've ever read yeah. And and I and and we should. Talk. What's a pantoum? Can you do, does does everyone know what a pantoum is? I would guess not. No, no. I don't know because I, I I tried to write one once and it did not come out as well as Martha's. <laughs> it's I think the second, uh, no, ah, second, second and fourth lines become the first and third lines of the next stanza. So it's a wonderful kind of meditative form, right? It, and of it, and of and of each stanza. Yes, of yes. each stanza. And then when you get and to the, then <laughs> okay, Martha. And then you go go back to the first stanza and you retrieve things that haven't repeated yet in reverse order, so it it becomes circular. And I that's what I I'm I'm fascinated by in this form because writing is generally linear you go from you go from point a to you know point z uh and you're moving along in in time and the pantoum <laughs> is really is one one of one of the forms but maybe the maybe the the primary form which is not linear which is as martha says circular and circular is so um central to what this poem is about uh the cyclical cyclical nature or I, I i don't want i don't i don't want to do all the talking but um but do you do you see that the way that this form actually does something in relation to what the poem is about that's really that's really unique susan yeah yeah it was so musical to me, like it almost could be sung, and I felt it physically, like I was spinning or well, exactly. Moving. I felt it. Yeah, exactly. Could be a dance, even. Yeah, uh, I think that's sort of what what's behind it is is that is that dance that <clears throat> and certainly that 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 spinning. Stephen, did you have your hand up for a moment or? No, but I had a, a quick comment I'll add. I, I also loved how different this poem is from Martha's uh, more typical poems, where Martha always has, um, you know, voids and um, uh, spaces where the mind has to leap, has to fill in, has to add color to the unpainted canvas. This feels like it's one 
continuous, uh, I wouldn't say just circle, a bit like a spiral, because yeah. it changes a little bit. It, it bends the form a little bit. It feels as if there isn't a void and we just flow with it. But I also think that's a little bit of a trick because I think she's allowed places where the mind suddenly accidentally leaps and didn't realize it went someplace it, it unexpected and then rejoins the circle again and allows the rhythm to take us along. So I, I just liked how um, it felt like it was a comfortable um, uh, progression and we were just being guided in it. And we weren't aware how often we were required to leap or to find something new in the meaning. Can you can you point to one of those points? Uh, there was one, the most beautiful one, obviously, is, um, uh, let's see if I can find it quickly here. So we see the falling and the pedals, and, and we know the regularity about that, but uh, where's the we will turn to air? Uh, and she, she brings in the body um, uh, nearer the end where it says um, uh, uh, hair and blood and skin. But in one of the lines it says, we will turn to air. Before everything was a natural process and you suddenly realize, oh, our bodies too, just like the snow, just like the leaves. You know, that's not explicit, but when that happens, I think that's when somebody said it was both reassuring and also a little frightening too. That was that moment where suddenly you realize, oh, I'm part of the cycle that I was not yet prepared to accept. I'm not finding the exact line here, though. Maybe we'll do it as the discussion goes on. Yeah. Well, I think what happens near the end of the poem, actually, in the in the third in the third to last stanza, uh, which I again, I, and I think uh, that I share your 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 sense that something new. It's what's really uncanny about this poem is that you you sort of think you got it as you're <laughs> as you're reading it, and then something new, something in, really entirely new, is added that kind of puts everything else in 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 a in a human context, mm -hmm. and it's the line. Uh, like hair and blood and skin colors will brighten the air like hair and blood and skin and then you think well that's beautiful colors will brighten the air and you think all the different colors of hair all the different colors of skin but then blood also and blood is a little less well, reassuring or a little less comfortable, but it's human. Hmm. And that the human element of the poem, the, the human element behind what's what we've read all the way through suddenly becomes becomes very explicit. And um oh I I I, I am sorry. I thought I turned my phone off, but I, now it now it's off. It won't bother us again. Um, um, but that human element suddenly becomes very explicit and very striking, and I think really powerful. I mean, you just you think, well, what 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 a beautiful poem, and how skillful and really beautiful everything is shaped in the palm and then something new comes into it john i see a i see a an a, a, a hand icon no cammy hi great to see hi, you hi cammy great to see you Martha. hi cammy um, well, uh, what I think that line, it's incredibly startling and it's startling kind of in the way that my sense of my own mortality is startling to me as I'm just galloping along through life and everything's kind of repeating and the leaves come and the leaves go and we're in the circle and we see it every year. Here we go again, there's coming. And then like hair and blood and skin and I'm like, oh, uh oh. 
And it, it is the way I live my own life. You know, there's mm -hmm. these sudden startling moments or sometimes it stretches into months of illness or whatever when that hair and blood and skin is very yeah. personal and scary. And uh, so I thought we, there were so many, the, the reason it sort of feels like lived life is that there is repetition, but with a lot of change. So there's similar syntax, there's similar rhythm, and yet there are these subtle differences all the way. And that too reminded me of sort of going through life where you have these habits, but you don't really live every day exactly the same way, obviously. Yeah. So I love the startle of that. And then I thought, well, yeah, she's right, of course, but I hadn't really been thinking about it that way. I was sort of in a pleasant nature, you know, sort of scene and now, uh oh, so I think that's part of it that you just kind of crash into it. And then, yeah. you, and then she gives you a little chance to recover from it, you know, but you realize in the recovery, maybe you're gone now. <laughs> and the snow is falling. Yeah. Yeah. And and so it's it, it's I think it's one of those r really rare poems in which the the form is so inextricably an expression of the content of the poem of what's of what the feeling is uh uh of what the feeling is in the poem and then i you know i i think um let's go back let's go back to the title and the epigraph because okay. i i think they're really steven i was, I was going to say this kind of fits in with everything we've said so far the epigraph which is utterly boring is so crucial it is so sly it it, it it's right. when you read it, you realize, well, what? Why is that news? The air, <laughs> you know, the, the snow right. will fall from the sky. That's obvious. Yet it was <laughs> right. the globe. So this should be not news, but somehow it is. And that's exactly what Cami was saying. The fact that we're mortal, the fact that as easily as you know, snow from the sky or leaves from the trees, we will fall from our lives. Oh, that's news. It seems like it should not be not worth a mention. And suddenly it is news to us, like the, the epigraph from the globe. So I think she was so sneaky in giving us something that would appear not to be carrying a lot of meaning and ends up modifying everything else in the poem. But it's also it's it it's also, I think, I think it's also a kind of joke on Martha's part that that the 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 statement is so it's really so silly, it's absurd. Because well, where else is snow going to come from? And it, in a way, it Martha. Well, I I assumed. I mean, I'm I made a comment on this. Uh, this was on. I think you can still find it on NPR. That it must have been a slow day on the weather. This is the weather. <laughs> right. A slow day at the weather desk. So they were making a joke. Um. <laughs> Kind of what I thought. I mean, it was so startling that they would say that. And I thought, ah, they're joking, of course. But <clears throat> of course, I didn't forget it. Right. But what about what about um so Stephen, you 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 leapt directly to the epigraph, but what what about the title? Hmm. Is it a good time, Mary? Uh, uh, unmute yourself, please. Yes. Um, I didn't think of it until just now, but um, because I was I was really caught up and entertained by the epigraph too. I love it. Um, but there's a sense that maybe, I mean, if the poem is the poem itself is from the sky, it's. It's so much about falling and, and what appears in the air as well as what comes down from the sky. So I think I have a sense, I mean, it's not the sky talking to us, but it has this, there's a, an authoritative kind of airy command about, about the poem that, um, that I can almost imagine from a sky 
perspective. I don't know. That wasn't very helpful. Uh, from a sky perspective. Oh, that's well, interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. Yeah, that is. It's just what struck me. But I love the title. Yeah. Any 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 other thought about the about the, about the title? Uh, Nick, yes, please. Well, it's just absolutely endless, I think, because almost everything comes from the sky. Sunsets come from the sky. Sunrises come from the sky. Beautiful birds come from the sky. Bombs come from the sky. You know, and on and on and on. I, bombs, I think, bombs. be the yeah. I'm sorry. But yes, bombs. I said. I think that may be the very first thing that I thought of when I saw this poem for the first time. Mm -hmm. oh that there was something from the sky was actually something kind of ominous and 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 scary and that um yeah that it might be bombs and then snow is expected to fall from the sky then the the joke of the epigraph so there's this kind of for me for me there's this kind of tension between the title which is kind of ambiguous at, at the very least but but there's some kind of tension between the title and the epigraph and that makes me really i mean still having you know having read this poem many times i still feel that tension and this kind of curiosity about how that tension is going to be worked out in in the course of the poem. And um Lloyd Denise and Michael wanted to oh, jump in. Thank Denise? you. Denise, yeah. I was just going to <coughs> ask you, Lloyd, in what year did you first read this that bombs and immediately came to your mind? Well, the the poem was first, I don't remember, but I mean the poem I you know, I think just having been alive through through the second half of the 20th century. Um, uh, the poem was published in 2001. I think it was originally published in 2001. It was probably, I don't know how long, how long did it take? How long did it take, take you, Martha, to get the poem published? Probably not very long. Uh, can you unmute yourself? I don't even remember where it got published. Well, it says, uh, oh, on my copy, uh, it says Orion, 2001. Oh, yeah, I I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I may have just sent it to Orion. Right, but, but probably not much before 2001. No, no, because no. I don't think I wrote this. I, I, cut out the little weather report and put it on my desk and put it in my notebook and probably didn't write the poem in 2000 in 1999 probably got around to it later right so. right nick yeah i just like to point out that uh, at this very moment enormous blockbuster bombs are falling in gaza they are new york times new york times headline this morning describes that. Yeah. That's what I thought when I just read it, you know, an hour ago. Right. Right. Um, uh, they are indeed. And Michael, go ahead. Yes, please. Yeah. I, the poem evoked for me, um, where have all the flowers gone? Mm -hmm. I recently ran into from ah. Peter, Paul and Mary, which... <laughs> certainly ties in with the bombs in its way. And I was wondering whether that was an intentional echo or if it's just another circular work of art. Well, you can ask Martha. Uh, not consciously, but uh, certainly I knew this. And um, I don't know. <laughs> Well, there, yeah, I mean, there are, there are, there are certainly other, 
uh, other other circular circular poems and 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 sort of circular forms vill villanelles kind of sestinas um where things from the beginning return at the at the end or return throughout the throughout throughout the poem uh, I, I I do think the pantoum is is the most explicitly um, at war uh, with the linear the, the the basic linear quality of of writing itself, and that it's making you stop and think and go back and keep on turning and turning uh on it on itself from no, quest the, yeah quest could this is a question for martha um how did these two things come together this form and this subject um this is the only pontoon i've ever written and i suspect it's the only pontoon I'll ever write. I see. <laughs> um, what it reminds me of Lloyd's, Lloyd's Sestina, which I think is the only Sestina you've written, at least the only one I know about. And the only one. <laughs> when you're teaching, you know, you become very conscious of what people are doing. And, and I have a kind of rule that I never ask my students to do anything that I haven't done. So you know, there's always this little mental list over here of stuff that if I'm going to present to a class, I'm going to have to do. And um, that's not something I carry around with myself consciously. I wasn't thinking, oh, I've got to find something to write a pontoon about. But somehow that consciousness that I'd never written one and this epigraph and where the epigraph might lead sort of I guess not consciously, but came together. Mm -hmm. If I had sort of pontoon in my consciousness and I've never done one, I've never wanted to do one, I've never had anything that seemed to call for that form, uh, I probably wouldn't have written it. That's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, tell you a, I'll tell you a little story because I, and um, uh, you, you know, you probably do uh, ask your students, as as I used to, to write something in a form. Yeah. To you know, at least to give it to try it. And I remember one student who was particularly resistant to that, and she she wrote in very free verse, and uh, and I was really very insistent that she try something, and she really didn't think form was valuable or useful in any way and that it interfered with expression. And then, and I said, well, you just need to do some, you need to do something, any form, uh, you know, I don't care what it is. And the following week, she had written a pantoum. And it was the best thing she had ever written at that that I was aware of, uh, it's the only pantoum that any student of mine has, has ever written, and I hadn't written a pantoum, and uh, though I, I've tried, <laughs> but it changed, and she never wrote another pantoum, but it changed her whole attitude toward form, and the rest of the semester, all of her poems were in different forms, and she loved it. And thought, you know, the, that the the what she considered a straitjacket was actually a kind of doorway, was a kind of liberation for her, and that she could actually put her thoughts together more easily and more with more excitement than when she could just write all over the page. Um, and it was a it, it was a terrific poem. Um, um, uh, yours is still the best 
pantomime. <laughs> I I know. Um, snow will fall from the sky. Snow will turn to rain. Rain will fill our streams. The earth will turn again. So turn becomes <coughs> an important word in the poem, though it's it's so understated. And what about this? What do you feel about this uh, opening opening stanza? It's so it's very understated. It's very simple. But something's going on. And what 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 do you what do you what's your response to reading that that first stanza? Cammy. Um, well, this kind of goes along with the title, too. Yeah. There's a kind of um, really large, distant perspective in the poem. Um, and I, I kind of get that later from the we, using we. There's something about it that uh, there, it's so quiet, cool, flying way above, watching. Uh, and then there's the little alarm for me on the last word of that stanza, the earth will turn again. I thought, what, 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 has it not been turning? And now it's going to start up again. I had this little, little shiver at, on that word, but I think fundamentally just the, the distance, the, the high flyover, the sky perspective. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I, Mary, uh, un just leave yourself unmuted. I will leave myself unmuted. Please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, shoot. I just, I just kind of lost my train. Um, okay. I'm probably reading, I'm probably projecting, right? Um, but to me, there's a little sense of underlying anxiety or concern, almost as if these they're these are reassuring things to to tell oneself right rain will fill our streams the earth will turn again a sense that there's a there's almost like there's a question like there was a question or a state of anxiety prior to these kind of answers or this um reassuring um mm -hmm. series of statements I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. maybe that's just me in my normal anxious state <laughs> seeing that in it. But <laughs> uh, Ted, Ted, could you could you tell us what you just wrote in the chat? Because I, I, um, I don't sure. think everyone saw it, and it goes by so quickly. I said the word "will" takes us into the future. We're looking forward, toward, ahead. Yeah. I, and I actually, I mean, I think the will, the word will is, I mean, and that's the word that gets repeated most. 31 times I counted. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Thank you. Um, and it's certainly repeated um, the most in that stanza. And will is not a word that exactly sticks out but moving from snow is expected to fall from the sky uh-huh yeah right and then the, then the will in the poem changes that to from snow is expected to some kind of inevitability um, inexorability that these things are going to happen and we don't have any choice about that. So there is an, an element of, well, sure, we know this, but then to me, there's also something a little ominous about that, about this... Uh, inexorability about this inevitability snow will fall from the sky snow will turn to rain 
I mean, that's not how you would you would read it, but that in, in a way that sort of underlies it certainly underlies the way I read it. Rain will fill our streams. The earth will turn again. Well, that's kind of, it's both a little scary. And then there's also something, well, the earth will turn again. Well, that's reassuring. So there's something, Will is doing lots of interesting things that you don't expect from a word that's kind of so ordinary. And um, and so the the the, the will, um, it's not in every line. In, as you as, as you say, Susan, it's it's repeated thirty one times. So it's not in every single line. But it it, it 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 I'm sure it's the word. I mean, maybe there are more thes than wills, but I'm not sure about that. Um, what I think Ellen and Jim Ellen yeah I just saw I just saw your hand and then Jonathan who is Jim uh I have a slightly different take on the last line of the said the earth will turn again uh I I think the first three lines are expected you know snow is going to fall from the sure. sky uh the common common we expect but then I think uh, it suddenly moves out at a vast distance when it suddenly is the earth will turn again. Uh, and I think that people are saying that question about will it turn, will it in fact turn again? Uh, I think uh, Lee, you know, raises the anxiety that uh, filters through the whole poem. Uh, so I think there's that shift in the, in the fourth line that uh, yeah. seems very powerful. Yeah, there's. I, I agree with you. I mean, there's definitely something else is happening in that in that fourth line, John. I, just to go back to the, um, the quote at the beginning for just a second. Sure. The, uh, you know, I'm sure my attitude towards the Boston Globe <laughs> colors this, but um, but it's <laughs> it, it, it's comical and absurd, uh -huh. and 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 I was so I was looking for echoes of that absurdity in, in the rest of the poem. And they're not explicit as far as I can make out, but it colors the whole poem for me. It, it creates a kind of distancing from all these things that we're looking at this, okay, this is silly, but, or this is ironic, but I'm not sure. But it has a, it has a very distinct coloring uh, that to me shapes the rest of the, the poem. Uh-huh. That's all. Yeah. Sarah, me the the thing that just jolted me and and is the hair and blood and skin. It yeah. is it it's just a total stopper, and yeah. um we it, it it's really questionable what's going to happen to the hair. It, it will turn to it will turn will turn to earth uh, earth, but. The air will be snow. I mean, the, the air doesn't come back in here again with blood and sweat and tears in it or whatever else it was originally. <laughs> blood and skin and hair. Right. It, it really just stopped the whole thing cold for me. I couldn't, I couldn't read. I mean, I couldn't feel comfortable with the rest of the flipping over. And I suspect I wasn't supposed to feel comfortable. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's, that's exactly right. Um, Karen Miller, I think you wanted oh. to say something. Oh, please. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hi, Martha. Uh, one quick note on the epigraph that I thought it also almost could have been a line of poetry, you know, in the sense that when you say snow is expected to fall from the sky, yes, obvious, but maybe it won't. I mean, that it, <laughs> in that way, it plays with the wanting to pretend that things you know will happen won't or might, might not. So that's just a, a thought on that. The, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, which echoes other people's comments, is I really feel like this poem sings through my body. I mean, yeah. it is so evocative in that way. 
um, of course, evoking mortality, as all of us have mentioned. And I happen to have a very young, extremely anxious puppy at the other end of the lifespan who somehow comes into this poem for me too in this kind of back and forth in the cycle and it's really wonderful. So. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I agree. Um, I also, I just, I've been meaning to say because I, I, this is something that had occurred to me before that, um, in a way, the the answer to my, to my first question about um, why do you think I like this poem so much, and um, it's it's not that it reminded me of my own poem. It's that it reminded me of one of the greatest poems in the English language, which is the Thomas Nash Litany in Time of Plague, which, oh, also, which also has a, a lot of repetition. And, um, and, um, and has, uh, falling in it um I, so i'm trying to i'm trying to find the yes um so i i i hear this as a kind of background to martha's poem and especially this stanza beauty is but a flower which wrinkles will devour brightness falls from the air and um it's a litany in time of plague so it's 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 um it's not it's not a happy poem mm. uh and that that undercurrent of sadness and grief and that sense of mortality, I think is something that, especially that brightness falls from the air, um, has a kind of resonance. Um, you know, thank you. Yeah, has a kind of resonance um, or even adds a kind of resonance uh, to, to Martha's poem. And I was, I was gonna. I, I had. I guess I had always meant to ask you whether. I mean, of course, you know that poem, but whether you had ever had it kind of explicitly in mind. No. Uh, one of the wonderful things about this conversation you're all having about my poem is that I'm learning things about my poem. I did not know there were thirty-one wills in it. <laughs> <laughs> But of course, and I mean, it's not just the air, it's the colors will brighten the air, duh. I mean, yeah. bright and air in mm -hmm. the same line. And you know that, that's the most famous line in that in that Nash poem. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to think that it wasn't somewhere in my subconscious. Sure. Yeah. Let me say one other thing about that and about the use of form. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I love about it, and I don't know that it's quite so true of this poem, but um, when you're doing form, it puts to sleep your conscious sense of what you're saying. So that um, mm. so things sort of bubble up because they have to bubble up to meet that demand of what that repeated line or that repeated rhyme or that repeated word is. And um, in that sense, I find form to be, people talk about it being a very rational thing. Uh, it seems to me to have in many ways the opposite effect. Uh, and thank you for that. Thank you for that, Lloyd. I, I'm sure that was back there somewhere, especially yeah. when I got to the word brighten, not so much the air, but the word uh -huh. brighten with it. Uh, right. How right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, colors will brighten the air. Um, um, I, I, you know, I, 
this this is meant entirely to be praise for this poem that it's it that it's among among the other things that it does is put itself consciously or not in the context of great english literature hmm. you know and and gail did you yeah i just wanted to say that i think of it as a poem of the nuclear age you know and the the repetition and the just the diction is it's as if the the speaker and this is a speaker is reassuring herself and others that the apocalypse won't happen but but the repetition itself is a sort of expression of the anxiety you know the sort of the anxiety met by the the need to be sure and to say that things go on um yeah this has been a fantastic discussion but a really wonderful poem just really interesting it's very moving with the discussion and the poem yeah well it's like what what nick was saying before about well one of the things you think of is bombs and it's something that we have been you know um brought up <laughs> to uh you 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 can't not think of that as a as a possibility of what's of what's coming from the sky um sarah i'm still worried about my hair and, and my hair and blood and skin yeah uh, um where air will be seems to be but but the air does all sorts of things but i i'm getting the feeling that i'm not around ever again i don't come around again hmm um where we were air will be and yes the snow will it's fall it's from... repeated and everything else is beginning to come around again the snow will fall from the sky and we'll start all over again right so i think that's i but mean it's we... sort of interesting i don't mean it's supposed to be nasty but it's it's if you think of that if the you is an actual person a, you know a singular thing instead of anybody on the earth um you're not there anymore you're going to be your place is taken by snow and leaves and petals and air and yeah, air they'll, they'll they'll come back all those other things will come back mm -hmm. but i think but, my blood's going with me yeah yeah that uh, might not have been in the intention at the beginning well, but that's no. where it left me <laughs> well i no, i think that's very i think that's very much part of the poem um um i i think what I, I, well i i, I want to say uh or or ask you about a few more things because uh one of the things one of the new elements in the poem in the second stanza are the blossoms so everything at the beginning, there's a kind of, I mean, there's almost a kind of pastoral quality to this. This is, it's all, it's nature. Rain will fill our streams. Snow will turn to rain. Rain will fill our streams. The earth will turn again. Snow will turn to rain. And there's, that's a turn also. It's, it's using turn in a, in a different way. The earth will turn again is literally the earth turning, you know, turning around. <laughs> Snow will turn to rain. It's turn is really transform, and it's a different kind of turning. So snow will turn to rain. Blossoms will fill the tree. So that all this is also this loveliness, it is beauty. The earth will turn again. Petals will fill the air. And that's wow, that's so 
that's so lovely it's it's kind of arcadia it's it's um blossoms will fill the trees petals will fall like snow that's so beautiful it's so the delicacy of that is just so we're 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 in this at the beginning of the poem we're in this world of rebirth and beauty and nature and blossoms will fill the trees will fill the trees fill and i love the petals will fill the air blossoms will fill the trees from fall to fill is a such a interesting and sort of surprising and subtle change petals will fall like snow petals will fill petals will fall petals will fill the air green will fill the trees petals will fall like snow petals will fall to earth green will fill the trees where air was leaves will be and this is all it's all so beautiful and um karen Oh, oh! Can you repeat that for for every? I, I, I have a problem with with the chat because it just goes by too quickly for me to to take in, and there are always so many interesting comments. But could you repeat for all of us what you what you wrote in the chat? Well, I was uh, quoting Thich Nhat Tan, who talks about death as transformation, uh -huh. and that when we die, we we are not gone. We become clouds, which is part mm. of the air. We are clouds. We're clouds. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm. Um, where air was, then I think this one of the, you know, there's so many um, kind of plain statements in the poem. Snow will fall from the sky. Snow will turn to rain. Green will fill the trees. And then, but the 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 syntax of the where air was, leaves will be. Well, that's a it's a different kind of uh, what's the word? Affect. It's not just a plain grammatical statement. It's something something. It's something has changed in the in the language itself, in the diction itself. It's very subtle. It's very quiet. And the words are not complicated, but but there's been a, there's a change in some way. And the change and the change also has to do with something replacing something else. I mean, this is petals will fall to earth, green will fill the trees. Where air was, leaves will be. Is that oh Charles? You're you're allowed to speak. Yes. <laughs> can yeah. you can you repeat what you what you said in the chat and then Susan after you? It hadn't occurred to me before, but is that the only was in the poem? I mean, it's all this will. Well, there's well. There's also leaves where there was snow. Right. Ah, right. But it's a shift. But yeah, leaves where there was snow. Yeah. And there were um, my hair and blood and skin. <laughs> and the leaves were uh -huh. there. Where we were. Where we were. Yeah. Where we were. But yeah, um, Susan and then Mary. Yeah, uh, two comments. Again, going back to the, the way in which this poem is so artistic for me, like I think of the, the, the leaves, the air, and then the leaves feeling like trying to manage negative space in a, in a painting. Yeah. And um, yeah. The, the other comment is my first reaction to like hair and blood and skin was not human, it was animal. Oh, ha. Huh. Rabbits, mice, I mean, 
the animal world. Uh, well, we're animals too, but yeah, right. No, that's that's took, interesting. That took yeah. me a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's certainly it's it's certainly possible. And I'm not even going to ask Martha what <laughs> what she intended <laughs> by that, because I think it's a very legitimate response. It wasn't my response. I thought of human. Yeah, I did quickly after, but. Yeah. But it, it certainly could be in 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 this context. Um colors will brighten leaves will fall from trees so leaves where there was snow and then leaves will fall the, so the the whole latter part of the poem there's some there's some change uh going on about about what is ob observed wait did some mary were you oh i thought someone else had had a was going to say something. Mary, I think it was Mary. Yeah, it, it was, but I think you kind of already caught it. I was oh, just sorry. Going to say, <laughs> I was going to say that I I see the the parallel. I, I love the substitution that starts happening with the will be or where where there was snow. Um, but the the big one that I see is that um, related to the parallel between the we and the leaves. Um, like uh wherever um sorry well i guess the the really the one that really strikes me is where we will fall you know like the leaves and the petals from our lives um yeah. but where, where we were air will be yeah. where air was leaves will be so i kind of see the we and the leaves as somewhat compared um kind of brought together in that but I think you already touched on it. So No, no, no. But I think that's no, you're 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 I think you're right. And then that that line, the last line of that stanza, where we where we will fall from our lives after like hair and blood and we're hair and blood and skin, leaves will fall to earth, where we will fall from our lives. Well that that really makes it oh, oh bill welcome i didn't i i i i didn't see you had arrived yeah no i'm terribly sorry i i the, the clocks moved um here and i consequently showed up a moment ago thinking i was on time only to find that you've been going for an hour i'm very sorry but um, well uh, well well you 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 might be amused to know that that was um the interpretation of your not your possible interpretation of your not being there yet. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, we are with you. Your our change is is coming later today or tomorrow. Oh I see. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh anyway, welcome. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Martha, this is Bill Symes, Martha Collins. I've heard about you. <laughs> oh, right, uh, very nice to meet you, and I enjoyed your poem, and I'm uh, I'm looking forward to listening to this once um, uh, it's posted, uh, because I, uh, uh, irritatingly, I've been very intrigued about what people are likely to say, and now, of course, I'm going to have to wait a while to find out. Um, uh, can, right. can I ask one question that, sure. um, on the condition that you don't answer it, if in fact it takes you back into something that's already been um, dealt with? Um, is the thing um, Ulipian at all? Is it? Is there some kind of? Um, did you know um, Ulipo? Um, that, that sort of French literary group which opera, yeah. um, specializes in writing under constraint. I, I, I was just um, in, in thinking about the poem in advance. I was wondering whether there is some arcane um, hidden rule governing the permutational procedures in the poem some constraint which it was operating under, but which I couldn't quite put my finger on. Yeah, that's what we started talking about. Oh, oh, right. oh right, in that case, please don't double back. Um, you can look that up and you can also catch from the recording the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Of course. yeah. So, so, so it is a, it is a traditional form, the pantoum. Oh, I see, okay, right. And so it's, and, and as I, 
I, it's worth repeating uh, that um, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best pantoum written in English. <laughs> so, um, okay, right. So and, it, and, it, and it's the perfect uh, embodiment of, of, of that form. Ah, okay, right. And I think uh, that's older than Ulipo. Yeah, oh, much. It's a Malaysian form. I've never actually seen a Malaysian form in it. It keeps getting repeated that that's what it is. Most recently, I heard somebody or saw online somebody from that part of the world say that, and that's why she liked the poem. Like, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's very old and and not Western. Yeah, right. Well, well, thank you. I'm so, sorry for forcing you to repeat yourselves. Not at all. Not at it's all. Nice having you. Yeah, yeah. There are a couple of things I want to say, and I just there are so many things to admire about this poem. Uh, one of them being just the absolute precision of the language and the images, as if it's a mathematical equation. Hmm. And so it has that kind of logic which just sort of pulls you through it. And secondly, it also has the deceptive simplicity of a children's book. And that it seems very simple, and yet it's so complex. And I loved how uh, Martha made the rhythm so haunting and incantory, really lulling the reader into sort of going forward into accepting all the premises. It's very much like she had become an assassin, however, is that <laughs> she became the cobra who was lulling us, and then at the end of the poem, just coming out to sort of grab us and or fight us, you know, to bring us into reality from this kind of children's book. And so I just loved her strategy and and how she arrived it and, and how it it just is marvelous, marvelous poem. I I I I also um I mean you bring up a, a, a another technical issue which I'm I'm so which I love so much about this poem and that the um, there are these very qu quiet and subtle changes of rhythm. Snow will fall from the sky. So it's, it's, it's um, trochaic rhythm, the accent on the first syllable. But then you also get like hair and blood and skin, which is iambic. Uh, where where we will fall from our lives so that there are these little you you might be deceived to think that this is a kind of nursery rhyme that it's all da 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 but it isn't there are these all these and it's very musical and very sophisticated about its own music um and that's mm. also, it's 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 a quiet thing. It's a subtle thing, but it's also, it's one of the reasons that you're never bored with this poem, because when you read it and as you hear it in your mind, the rhythm is always just very quietly, very subtly shifting, and that sense of the dance. Uh, through the poem is also it's not just in the words being repeated but in the rhythms being repeated and then changed nice. Martha I was consciously writing it's, it's it's an accentual poem there are three stresses per line right. yeah it's the variation within that uh, that I wasn't consciously making variations but of course that's what happens when you write <laughs> Um, Elizabeth Bishop is somebody I think of who uh, similarly will use the accentual line with variations. And um, it's something I do a lot. It's not as apparent as writing accentual syllabic verse, da dum da dum da dum. Right. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and, I certainly and, took them out of your head. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, I, I, thinking of... Um, I think one of Elizabeth Bishop's masterpieces um, in the waiting room is also, I think it's a three stress line and it's, it's, it's accentual, but you feel a kind of rhythm, but the, the rhythm is really 
changing in quiet ways with each line because it's the accented syllable that syllables that are the rule of the line and the unaccented syllables fall in lots of interesting different ways so uh cammy Oh, and after Cammy, Michael has patiently been waiting right. to, to jump oh, in. Oh, sorry. Cammy, join us. Let's hear. Um, yeah. So uh, since you bring that up, I noticed that the um, unaccented first syllables in really increase after like hair and blood and skin, which yeah. in itself is iambic. So at first, there are just maybe one iambic every stanza or two. But then here at the end, I don't know if I'm counting this right, but in the last right. 12 lines, there are six iambic beginnings. So it's as if things start, the poem starts to wobble. The rhythm kind of changes a little bit yeah. after that key line. That right. was really interesting. And actually I had a question based on what we were talking about a long time ago that's related to this, which is kind of, Martha saying that if you write in a form, sometimes your your thinking self kind of falls asleep because you're trying to do the form and then interesting things happen. And I just wondered, Martha, where this poem surprised you, whether it was whether we got surprised or in some other place in the composition of it where you went, whoa, what's happening? I, I don't know, Cammie. I certainly, I mean, I, like many of us, I don't know where I'm going when I start a poem. If I did, I wouldn't be writing it. Uh, I certainly knew I was going seasonally, and it's very hard to think seasonally without thinking of all kinds of other related cyclical things. So um, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I know that um, I did not think of animals when I wrote Like Hair and Blood and Skin. Um, I was consciously thinking of people and and I think you know when I said skin I was certainly thinking of different races of people colors yeah the, the yeah. When I said colors uh and then when I said skin that's the way I was thinking about colors I I don't remember if it's before I wrote this poem or not but there was an exhibit at the Hartford um our, uh, Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, somebody had put up a chart that looks very much like this screen with all the little boxes in it. Uh, they just had different pigmentations of skin uh, and just the incredible range of different colors. And, and, and it was really quite beautiful. Uh, if we're just looking at Caucasian faces, it's not so beautiful. It's just kind of more same-ish. But I, but I know that that consciousness was behind that line for me even though i think this is a poem about race but uh but i certainly was was conscious of that yeah i i, I certainly took it that way well and i think the word hair kind of helps because if, it, if if i were thinking animals i'd think fur more like i mean i know animals have hair but if you say hair you're kind of in the world of people i think mostly so I see how you could read it the other way. I don't mind the animals being in my poem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael and then Bill Bennett. I was uh, reflecting partly because of what Will mentioned early in the chat about the seasons changing through the poem in contrast to Keats' um, To Autumn that we did last time. In To Autumn, you go from late summer to early winter in three long stanzas with um, very many multisyllabic syllabic words put into the scheme. Mm -hmm. Here you have uh, two syllables at most and rarely them. And you get a whole year in a single stanza. And as you get towards the end of the poem, you start doing decades. But it reminded me of kind of the difference between the theology and writing of uh, Paul the Apostle and John the Apostle, where Paul has these very long, intricate arguments, very multisyllabic, while John manages to say very profound things 
with very simple words and very simple Greek. And there's something of that being done here. It doesn't require any long high polluting words to still say a lot about our world and our condition. Martha? That's just very nice. Thank you. Uh, I love the the Gospel of John, and it it's there may be some of that in here. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the beginning of that Gospel. Hmm. Yeah. Um. A uh, Bill. Bill Bennett. Oh. You sure? Okay. Yeah. There. I finally made it work. Um, I actually don't have anything to add after all. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 that's probably not true. But um, any, I, I, am I missing, uh, am I missing someone? No, you're good. Okay, good. So, um, well, let's look at those last, just of those last stanzas as we're as as we come come to a close and the poem comes to a close. Um so leaves will fall from trees, colors will brighten the air, leaves where there was snow, leaves will fall to earth. So the downward spiral is earth is the, the the sort of turning point here. This is the 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 the, the new well their petals will fall to earth. It's in the palm, but the leaves falling to earth um is it seems to me more final. Colors will brighten the air like hair and blood and skin. Leaves will fall to earth where we will fall from our lives. And then fall, again, fall is really another sort of turning point. Uh, th there's a more of a human reverberation in that like hair and blood and skin and then that that's i mean what's so what's so interesting in the form is the way um the one of the lines is always going to be the first line of a stanza. Second. And the first line of a stanza is, oh, you know, has a, to me, has a kind of additional sort of energy to it. So we, when we get to like hair and blood and skin as the first line of the stanza, well, there's always, there's something ominous already about it, something unsettling. Now it's the first line of the stanza. So it sort of be becomes the subject of the stanza. Like hair and blood and skin, leaves will turn to earth. <clears throat> and um, so in the er previous stanza, I, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but colors will, the previous stanzas, colors will brighten the air like hair and blood and skin. And now it's like hair and blood and skin, leaves will turn to earth. So the what's like hair and blood and skin is really different. And it it becomes the sort it becomes the subject of the whole stanza and really of the whole rest of the poem. Like hair and blood and skin, leaves will turn to earth where we will fall from our lives, where we were, where we were, air will be. So there's been this 
there's really this large change because it's not just the season, but it's the human element. Leaves will turn to earth. Rain will fill our streams. Where we were, air will be. Snow will fall from the sky. And, and just in this quiet, mysterious way, it's just, uh, it's just chilling to me and so, so moving. Um, I, I think this poem could be the epigraph to all of your books. <laughs> you know, that there, that, that there, you know, it's sort of, it's something that's, that seems to be an expression of what's behind everything that you write. And uh, I find that really exciting and thrilling and moving and i've always loved this poem and um anyway i that 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 that's it's certainly why i i chose it and the uh i'm so glad you you are responding to it everyone is responding to it in in um in a kind of similar way I from what I from what I hear Bill do you want to say anything as 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 we as we as we wind up today as we wind up today um so sorry uh, this bill uh, you yes yes th that bill you you your bill yeah I, I'm well I, I again I don't know whether I'm uh um, covering ground you've already trodden, um, having arrived late, but um, just in relation to um, the stanzas you covered, I mean, we get with like hair and blood and skin changing its position, we move from um, uh, um, a loose sentence to a periodic one, don't we? So, so that in the first case, the the SVO unit um, uh, comes first, and then. Uh, as in a loose sentence, but then it comes, um, the, the SVO unit is held back and completes the um, uh, sentence. And um, when, when sort of a, uh, an alteration or modification like that occurs, e even as it's terribly poignant, even as we are affected by the meanings in play, we're also thinking about the whole construct as a sort of self-reflexive entity. It's almost as if it's an investigation of the sentence and an investigation mm -hmm. of word order and how word order conditions mm -hmm. meaning. And I and I I mean that that, that I felt that particularly um, in relation to those lines you just commented on. But I think it um, the effect obtrudes itself throughout the poem. We're we're forever um uh, as it were um being moved by the reflections on transience and loss and so on, and thinking about how language constructs meaning. And there's a perpetual tension between those two um, modes of responsiveness. Uh, I don't know whether that was something which cropped up in your earlier thoughts. Well, in, in not so explicitly, but, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that's, Martha, do you have any sort of response to, to that? Uh, just, well, a general response, I think, because we're sort of winding down is- We are winding down, yeah. Uh, Stephen and Michael both have their hands up, I think. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, Stephen and then Michael. Oh, um, I, this is sort of a part of the summing up, going back to the uh, title and the epigraph. I, I uh, was thinking of Ezra Pound's formulation that poetry is news that remains news. And I said that the um, epigraph is, is something we should say is goes without saying. But when you say it, it suddenly becomes news in a new way. And Martha's whole poem, the news report in Martha's poem is, oh, we die. We're part of the cycle of nature we will disappear nature will continue this ought to be news that goes without saying but it's not it's necessary and so she's giving us something that 
both lulls us to sleep and and, and shakes us awake at the same time. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Michael? Oh, I forget who said it, and it certainly works in with what Bill was talking about, but negative space in this poem and realizing that what isn't said at the end of the poem where we have um, leaves will turn to earth. That's that transformational turn instead of the moving turn. But it doesn't say we will turn to earth. It just says where we were, air will be. There's that pulling us in to conclude our own mortality um, in the negative space, in what isn't explicitly said, requiring some more work of us, but that also tells it us, since we're telling it to ourselves rather than having it told to us, it has a greater impact. We get composted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just want to add Denise's last comment was, and I, I like this, the news from poems. News from poems. Yeah. Mary, um, some last words. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to touch on just the last two lines so quickly Please. that yeah. while, while we're talking about the, you know, there is a kind of quiet horror maybe lurking behind the poem, particularly with the the again in that first stanza suggesting that the world stopped. There, there was a crisis, um, something horrific, um, traumatizing. But um, these, just the last two lines, I just wanted to say, they're so beautiful that after all this difficult stuff, and, and even those last two lines are still difficult, but they're so beautiful. They feel like such a gift. Yeah. Maybe partly because it's not where we were, nothing will be. But yeah. suddenly the air will be, it's like a beautiful, it's a beautiful revelation. And to follow it with the repetition of the first line, it's almost, I feel almost celebratory in there. I mean, it's a yeah. really haunting beauty, but it's the haunting. air and the snow is just stunning. There's something so consoling mm -hmm. about that beauty. And um, I think you're 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 absolutely right. And um, Martha, you it's a wonderful poem, and um, um, and thank you for um, uh, for being here to um, um, celebrate celebrate it and um, respond to our comments. Well, can I speak? Yes, uh, please, thank you all. Uh, this is really a joy and a pleasure and a revelation. I mean, when people, people always find things if they look carefully and are good readers in your poems that you didn't know were there. And so, so I very much appreciate it. Um, a couple of things I wanted to say I, in response to some early comments, I couldn't have written this poem today because I'm too conscious of bombs falling from the sky. And realizing, Lloyd, that I must have given you the poem before it was in the chapbook in 2008, back oh, in 2001, there is a poem in this chapbook written earlier, a few years earlier, called The Bombs, in which the bombs speak and the bombs are falling. Uh, it was written about Kosovo. We hit the train, we are sorry, it was a mistake, et cetera. Um, and before 9-11, before, before the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I could have written this poem without the bombs if it hadn't been in what I now see as a kind of brief lull between wars. Um, and I also especially appreciate Mary's comment at the end. Um, after I read this on NPR, um, it was on Morning Edition, I think, on a Saturday morning. Um, I got some mail and people requested the poem and wanted to have it read at their funerals or memorials. And um, if anybody here lives me and there is any kind of memorial, I would like to have the poem read at mine. Because to me, it, it not only incorporates all kinds of difficulty, but it is a consolation. 
So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so and, much. And again, thank you, Marita, for um for letting this uh happen. Um and and Martha, just uh, thank you. Uh yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right, Denise, could you just that's a great way to end our session today. Could you could you just quote that? William Carlos Williams Long. <laughs> um, it is difficult to get the news from poems, but men die miserably every day for lack of what is found there. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. Great session. Great thank session. Thank you all. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.